Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Apple Script Today. My name is Chris, and today we're going to talk about making multiple duplicates of a single file, as well as talking about putting some error detection and error compensation into your code. Everyone knows in macOS that if you want to duplicate a file, you don't need to open it. All you need to do is right-click or control-click on it, which brings up the context menu here, and you can see we can duplicate this file with a new name, test copy, because of course Finder won't allow you to have the same name on two different files. If you don't want to go through that, you can also do a keyboard shortcut. I can show you here if you do Command D. And if you just keep doing Command D over and over and over again, it'll just keep making as many copies as you want to of that file. And if this is something that you're just doing one time, just for one file, that's, that's fine. That's probably enough functionality for you. But if this is a thing that you need to do on a regular basis for a file that you regularly create as part of your workflow, and maybe you need to create five copies or 10 copies or 15 copies, whatever it would be, instead of doing Command D or right clicking and selecting it from the menu, you should set this up in an automation to do it for you. So let's take a look at that. So here we have this Apple script, and I'm just going to briefly run through what it does and then show you it in action. First of all, we get the file from the finder, the file that is selected. So in this case, you see the test file here is selected, and that's what would come up. And then we tell it to tell us what the POSIX path is, which is something that we need for a step later on down here. Then we get a display dialog, which asks the user, how many duplicates do you want to make? And then we have the shell script which will go through and make duplicates and put a number and a little underscore with the number in every new file that it creates. Now, if you don't know what a shell script is, that's perfectly fine. This is the scripting language for Unix, which is the foundation of Mac OS and for Linux. And, and if you run a Linux system, you can use these scripts. And if you run Mac OS, you can use these scripts. One of the great things about Apple Script is how it allows you to combine Apple script functionality with shell script functionality. So you can see we have an Apple script variable in the middle of our shell script. And here's another Apple script, Apple script, excuse me, variable in the middle of our shell script. So let me just run this and show you what it does. So I'm going to click run here. And how many duplicates? And let's say five. And we hit OK. And as you can see, it gives us five copies with an underscore and a number, which is what this shell script is doing right here. Let's do it again with a larger number. Okay, so we'll do it again. And this time we'll say, I want 15 copies. And as you can see, we'll get this out of the way. It made 15 copies. Now, one of the interesting things about this little script is you noticed in the first example, when it just made five, it gave us single digit numbers here. And when I put in 15 copies this time around, it gave us double digit numbers here. I'll just bring that back up to show you. Now, the reason it did that is because of this little W here. This, this line tells the code to do a sequence of numbers. And the little W means that it will keep the numbers the same width. So if you put in 100 or 1,000 copies, it will put the correct number of zeros as placeholders in any number. So it just does all that automatically. But the thing I want to talk about mainly on this video is what to do about error detection and error correction. Now, if you write software, if you write real code for real applications that real users are going to use in the real world, you know that much of your time is spent trying to imagine what mistakes users are going to make, what mistakes the computer is going to make, what mistakes are going to happen in terms of something to do with the internet or something to do with some other thing on the computer or something that the user does that, that you as the person writing the code have to plan as best you can for in the code. Now, when you're writing scripts for yourself to use on your own computer, it's, it's often not necessary to put in a lot of error detection or maybe even any error detection. But in this particular code, I do like to have some error detection even just for myself. 
even though I'm the only one using this, because number one, I know that I'm not perfect and I make mistakes. And number two, when you ask someone, uh, when you ask a user for input, like we are here, we come up with a default answer too. And if I run this and theoretically, if I put in any number, it'll work, that's fine. But if I, let's say I make a mistake, and I put in something that isn't a number just by accident. My finger hits a wrong key or something like that. And instead of two, I put in 2,000 like that. And I hit OK. The computer is going to do its best to make 2,000 copies unless you come up with some kind of error detection. And so in this particular code, I do have some error detection. And I'm going to show you what that is. So I put some new code in here. And as you can see, I put it in after this line about asking for the number of duplicates to make. So if I put in the number two, the next thing that happens is this line of code is going to say, if that number is greater to or equal than 100, then it will pop up another display dialog asking you, are you really sure? Do you really want to make this many copies? So let's see what that looks like. I hit run and let's say 900 copies, 900 duplicates we want to make. And then it's going to say, are you sure you want to make 900 duplicates? And I'm going to say, no, of course, I don't want to do that. Or you could say, do you want to make 900 duplicates? Something, you know, you phrase it however you want to phrase it. This is how I phrase it here, but I'm going to say no. And then we see in this line of code, if the button return of the number test is no, which it was, then we put in return, which just means that the code stops. Whenever you put return in an Apple script, it just stops the code right there. Now, if we had hit yes, then this test right here would have failed and the code would have gone on to, to go on and make 900 copies, which thankfully it didn't. So that's one kind of error detection you can do in this kind of script. Another kind of error detection you could do is to run a test to see if the input here in this number of dupes display dialog was anything other than a number, like if someone put in a letter or a special character or something by accident. Now, again, when you're writing these scripts for yourself, just for yourself to use, it's up to you to determine how much error correction and detection you want to do. But in this particular one, I do like to put in something about the number just to make sure that the computer doesn't try and make, you know, 900 copies or 1500 copies of some file that's one gigabyte in size or something like that. And there are some other kinds of error detection we could do in this kind of a script. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so you can see I've added some more code. We've added two groups of code here to test whether the file that it's has been selected in the finder is either a volume or a folder. That I should say the thing in the finder is either a volume or, or a folder. This code down here, this shell script, is only going to work on files. Now, theoretically, in both cases, the code just should fail on its own. If you actually ran this and you had a folder selected or a, or a drive selected. But just to be on the safe side, I like to include this little test just so the code stops and so there's no potential problem at all with the computer trying to duplicate an entire, for instance, volume here. So let's run this and see what it looks like. As you can see in the finder, I have a folder selected here and so I'm going to run it and it says you can't duplicate folders this way. So let's run it again, this time with a hard drive selected or volume, as you can see it's called here. Uh, we have the Macintosh HD selected and we're going to hit run again and see what happens. And it tells us that we can't duplicate a drive. So that's just a quick overview of some of the kinds of error detection that you can put into your codes, your scripts that you write for yourself. As I say, if you're just using your computer yourself, then some of these things you probably won't have to worry about errors a lot of the time. But I always find that compensating for errors is a good mental exercise. It, it helps you think about your scripts. And also there are some potential situations where even you as, a, as an experienced user, a person who's writing your own Apple scripts and using your own Apple scripts, could still make a mistake, could still incorrectly put in a number or accidentally type a key that you didn't mean to or something like that. So to close out this video, let's just show you the duplicating a file script in action as a service. So you can see here we have the file selected and we have this set up as a service. I've spoken in another video about how to set up your Apple scripts as services. And when you do that, it makes it really easy and convenient to use. You can find them then in the context menu or you can set them up with a keyboard shortcut and you can just use a keyboard shortcut to activate it if it's something you use frequently. So let's show you this in action as a service. I'm going to write or control click on there. We go down to services. 
and we see make multiple duplicates. We hit that. How many would you like to make? 10. Hit OK. And there it is. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching AppleScript today. And we'll talk to you again next time. Bye bye. Thank you.